What's going on guys and welcome to the video. This is the finale of the cut. This is the last video, this is episode 12. Reached my goal weight, reached my conditioning weight I was happy with. So the cut is over and the way I figured I'd wrap up this series is I still get questions even though I've touched on a lot of the topics and I've tried to break down as, as thoroughly as possible. I'm gonna use this video to wrap up the series with how to make dieting easier. Four steps how to get shredded in four easy steps. So there's like this analogy that I always reference to, and I've always wanted to show it physically, so that's how I'm gonna kick off the video. So welcome. You just keep working, you just keep doing all you can, no matter how beat down you are, no matter how tired, no matter how hungry, you just keep going. No matter how bad it got, no matter how hungry it got, no matter how tired, no matter how long I was there, I would have never quit. Here's the thing. Step number one to successful diet is discipline. And this is the hardest for a lot of people. And if you don't have that discipline in place, it's hard to hit your macros, go through your training sessions, implement your cardio, make changes, embrace some of that suck as the diet gets deeper and harder. Discipline is number one. And this is the biggest thing I realize people struggle with. And when people reach out and ask questions about dieting, how do you stick to your diet? Well, let's refer to the switch because a lot of people turn on their diet and turn off their diet and turn on their diet and turn off their diet. And then they're good for a few days and a few weeks and they have a cheat meal and then it spirals into a cheat day, into a cheat week. The discipline switch is crucial for success for a diet. So what I do, like whenever I set my goals and my objectives towards something, maybe that switch is off for the moment, I turn it on, I go all in and like I am I'm in the mode, like I'm focused, I'm dialed in. I turn that switch on and then I break the switch so that I can't turn it off until I reach that goal or objective. That makes sense. You gotta visualize like, you know, you're going through life, you're doing whatever you wanna do. Oh, I wanna, I wanna diet, I wanna start this business, I wanna start this project. You turn that switch on and then you break the switch so you can't turn it off. So you have to reach that goal and that objective. Biggest, most important step in dieting and cutting is discipline. Now this brings us to step number two, which I have my notes and you can reference on the screen, setting up your macros. So you've decided you wanna diet, you wanna cut, and you're disciplined. You're 100% all in. Well, what do you do next? You have to set up your macros. The reason we track macros during a dieting phase or a cut is because it establishes a baseline of where you're at and where you wanna be. You need some sort of variable that you're adjusting to make changes. If you don't make any changes, well, you're not gonna get any results, you're not gonna see any changes so we track macros there's two apps that i recommend downloading before you start one my fitness pal it's a free app to track your macros and two it's called weight drop it's what i use to track my weight and just follow the progress as i'm progressing so you can make changes which we'll talk about later it's one of the other steps but setting up your macros so first things first i'm going to link below it's a online calculator to find your calories, your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, and it uses the mifflin saint Jor equation. So essentially it takes into account your height, your weight, your activity level, your sex, your age, uh, and it provides you calories, whether you wanna maintain, you wanna be in a deficit and lose weight, or maybe you wanna gain weight so you're in a surplus. You take those calories that it provided and you use your weight that you're currently sitting at. What you're gonna do is first establish your protein intake. Now, roughly your protein should be between 0.8 and 1.25 grams per pound of body weight. Your fat is gonna be between 0.35 and 0.45 grams per pound of body weight. And then for your carbs, you're gonna fill in the rest with the remaining calories that you have. So based off the calories that this equation provided you, whether you want to maintain, lose weight or gain weight, you're gonna set up your macros based off of those calories. So 
I have a little example that you can follow to maybe make it make more sense. So say for example, we have a young man who is 210 pounds. And after using the equation, his calories for maintenance were 3,399. So his weight, 210 times, and we're gonna, we're gonna give this guy a little bit more protein. 210 times 1.20 is gonna equal 252 grams of protein. Now to find fat, 210 times 0 0.40 equals 84, that's 84 grams of fat. And to find the carbs, we have to do a little equation to find the remaining. So his calories for maintenance are 3,399, and we're gonna subtract 1,764. That is his, his protein and fat calories calculated. Because each gram of protein is four calories, and each gram of fat is nine calories. So 3,399 minus 1,764 is 1,635 calories remaining. You divide this by four, you get 409. That's 409 grams of carbs. Those are the macros for this guy. 252 grams of protein, 84 grams of fat, and 490 grams of carbs for maintenance. Disclaimer, trust but verify. So even when you get these numbers from an online equation, this online calculator and equation does not necessarily know what your body needs. So after you get these numbers, after you get your macros, Test them for a week or two weeks, see how your body's reacting, and then make adjustments accordingly to reach your fitness goals. Trust, but verify. So let me give you guys a little update on new warehouse. So lobby, as soon as you walk in, that's new, that's new. BPN decal on the wall, and this thing is absolutely amazing. This is made by a company called Brave American. It's a hand carved wooden flag made by veterans. Oh my God, that's beautiful. And then the conference room is starting to come together. I think I showed you last time when I was working on this wall, this uh, shiplap wall. So this is finished and this is the new conference room, welcome. Now I'm giving these tips in order of how important I believe, me personally, they are one discipline two setting up your macros three step number three is going to be making adjustments to your training to your macros to continue success and here's something to keep in mind the entire time keep it simple keep it simple keep it simple there's a lot of different strategies and approaches and techniques to diet and training and nutrition and and everything like this whole fitness thing there's a lot of different opinions. These are my opinions and how I do it, but I like to keep it simple because it's very easy and it, be, it can become very easy for a lot of people to be overwhelmed by how complicated they make it for themselves. But if you're disciplined, you set up your macros and then you make adjustments too, you can make it pretty easy on yourself. So talking about making adjustments. Now, the goal when you first set up your macros, and we're talking about a dieting phase or a cut, is to diet on the most amount of calories as possible. You wanna eat as much as you possibly can while still losing weight because this increases the sustainability of your diet, like mentally and physically. So you wanna go into as small of a deficit from the beginning in order to lose weight. So maybe it's, it's 400, maybe it's 500 calories initially. If you, I mean, there's two extremes. There's one extreme where you're dieting too hard in the beginning and you burn out really quickly. There's the other extreme where you're not in a deficit enough where you're not losing any weight or you're not tracking accurately. So there's those two extremes. If you find yourself somewhere in the middle, you're gonna have results, you're gonna have success. So say for example, you start your diet and you're tracking your macros and you're losing weight slowly, maybe a pound, two pounds per week, and then that weight loss stops. Once that stops, you have to make adjustments to your deficit. You know, you have to take away more calories, whether that's in the form of nutrition, you're eating less, or you're burning more with exercise. So here's two different techniques in the way I like to do it. My protein stays consistent the entire time throughout a cut. I mainly manipulate carbohydrates and then fats. So maybe as I stop losing weight, I will take away 20 grams of carbs and five grams of fat. 
and I'll, I'll experiment with that for a week. And if I'm not losing any more weight, maybe I'll take away 20 more grams of carbs and five more grams of fat. And I'll make those adjustments as my weight loss stalls. Now you can also start incorporating cardio. So maybe you'll hop on a Stairmaster for 20 minutes a day or 20 minutes two to three times a week to begin. And as, I mean, you wanna, you wanna kinda just follow the progression. That's why tracking your weight and tracking your nutrition, you have these objective variables that you're manipulating. Just keep it simple. As your weight loss stalls, implement a deeper deficit with your diet or training in the form of cardio to keep losing weight. And just aim for that one to two pounds per week as you keep losing, as you keep losing. And when you stop losing, well, what do you have to do? You have to either take some calories away or burn some more in the gym or during cardio. So my biggest piece of advice is keep it simple. Now, what better place to talk about training for a cut other than our gym here? So we're still packing orders out of the old warehouse and operating out of the new warehouse. We're operating out of two spots right now. So on Monday, our signage gets delivered here and installed. So we'll have the VPN sign on the front of the building, on the doors, and then the rear loading docks. And then the mirrors that are gonna be behind the dumbbells right here get delivered on Sunday. So this spot, it's almost complete. Now let's talk training. And I'm gonna give two principles to keep in mind. The intent of dieting is one, maintain and retain as much muscle as possible, and two, lose as much fat as possible. Those two things. So your diet alone is going to do pretty much the work for losing the fat, being in that caloric deficit. Now to maintain and retain the muscle, what are you gonna do for training? Not much different from what you're probably already doing. So you don't want to change your training up too much because the way you've trained is the way you've built that muscle. And the intent of a diet and a cut is, like I said, retain as much muscle, lose as much fat. So your training should pretty much stay the same. You don't want to go like super high reps. You don't want to go like from a bodybuilding approach to a powerlifting approach. You want to pretty much keep what you're doing. Hypertrophy, high volume, moving blood into those muscles in like the six to 10 rep range and hitting the entire body like once or twice a week. I, I like to maintain my frequency of training muscle groups like twice a week while I'm dieting as opposed to like when I'm not dieting. Like I said, the training pretty much stays the same. The only thing that's gonna change is your nutrition, your diet, and maybe implementing some more cardio or some more HIIT training or maybe your workouts become more intense, like shorter rest periods to burn more calories and keep the body moving more, which like, just moving the body more and just working out harder, more intense, will increase your caloric expenditure and burn more calories, just like that. So training should pretty much stay the same. But that wraps up the video. Those are my four steps to losing body fat, to dieting for the cut. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next video. If you don't follow me on Instagram, or you don't follow BPN on Instagram, or you don't get our email uh, campaigns, we just released a new flavor of whey protein. It's chocolate peanut butter. It's probably our best flavor of protein right now. It's on point. So this is now for sale. It's live on the site. Check it out if you guys are interested.